His love of music was diverse. Nobuo Uematsu is very melody focused. He really likes the Beatles, bluegrass. I love rock. I grew up listening to Led Zeppelin. He started his career with a collection of simple tunes. Like one of the most well-known sounds in video games is that victory sound. Da -da 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 -da. He overcame the limits of technology. With his NES and SNES music, it was just brilliant considering what limited tools he was working with. And created one of the greatest musical dynasties in gaming. Immediately when you turn on a Final Fantasy game, you hear the soundtrack rolling into your speakers and you know you're in for a big, big adventure. Soundtrack. People are listening. This is the story of Nobuo Uematsu. On March 21, 1959, Nobuo Uematsu is born in Kochi City, Japan. My home, Kochi, is about an hour by plane from Tokyo. It was kind of a countryside, there was a lot of nature. When I was in elementary school, rather than going to the city for amusement, I'd go to swim in the river or get a tent and go camping. It's not long before this young boy from the countryside finds something he loves. As for music, I enjoyed listening to it from a very young age. When he is 12, Uematsu gets even more involved with music. In my high school years, rock and pop music were very popular, and my friends wanted to get a band together. At the very start, I think we were playing Beatles tunes. A lot of people play the guitar, and the bass and drums weren't for me. So when asked what I could play, I thought, well, there's a piano at my house, so why not the keyboards? That's how I became a keyboard player. He's kind of a, a very traditional musician. Um, he's very melody focused. I love rock. I grew up listening to Led Zeppelin. He really likes the Beatles, bluegrass. Those are some of his musical influences. Elton John writes such unique melodies. No one else writes melodies like him. I really admire that about him. Nobuo goes on to attend the University of Kanagawa. After graduating, he spends time composing music for commercials and playing keyboard in an amateur band. But one day in 1985, fate steps in. At that time, I lived in the building where a lot of aspiring artists, writers, and musicians would get together every night to drink. One time, a girl who was working and planning at Square came along. She said, there's a music job at Square. Do you want to try it? I said, I'll do it. And that's how it started. Square was a, a very small publisher in Japan. They'd come out with a number of uh, RPGs for the tiny floppy disk type games for the Nintendo Famicom here in Japan. And they produced a, a handful of cartridges. But really there was nothing to distinguish them, to set them apart from the the large number of small development houses that were able to thrive in Japan. By 1986, Uematsu is hard at work for Square composing music for both the Famicom and a Japanese computer called the PC-88. His early work includes Blasty, Rad Racer, and 3D World Runner. But all is not well with the small software developer. Square made a ton of games and some of them stuck, but not all of them were popular. Even though they had a, a small level of, of success, they were in a fair bit of financial trouble. Really, they needed not just a hit, but a mega hit if they were going to keep the company around. Now that Uematsu has a job doing what he loves, the company he works for might go under. However, Square still has one more game up its sleeve, and Uematsu is tapped to be its composer.
In 1987, Nobuo Uematsu is tasked with composing the music for what Square thinks may be its last title. Square was having some financial trouble. Final Fantasy, the name came from uh, the finality of it. It was seen as the final project for the company. Basically, it was their one last shot at redemption. The story was, it was called Final Fantasy because, like, if that game didn't do well, that was it for them. So it was the final, you know, attempt to save the company. Near the end of 1987, Square releases Final Fantasy for the Famicom in Japan. Both the game and Uematsu's soundtrack win high praise. Final Fantasy, like the very first one, it saved Square, so they could keep on making these games. And gamers begin to take notice of Uematsu's music. One of the, the most memorable things about the first Final Fantasy is the way it, uh, it uses motifs, like a, a John Williams score, a movie score. Each part of the game has music which sounds like that part of the game. When you go out into the field, you hear the exciting exploration theme. When you're in a battle, it gets tense. When you're in the ice cave, it's mysterious. At each stage of the game, he came up with a really great and fitting song. Many different styles that really strung together made a soundtrack. It wasn't just background music. One year later, Square releases Final Fantasy II, and again the music is composed by Uematsu. Interest in the Final Fantasy series continues to grow, and people love the music. In my mind, Nobuo Uematsu, he, he really brought a lot of soul to the Final Fantasy games. Well, it's simple music, so it's easily received by people. It's easy to understand. And what I'm trying to do, also what Final Fantasy is trying to do, is not say something complicated. Nobuo's music becomes so popular that a CD featuring his work from both Final Fantasy games is released on December 21st, 1988. Like one of the most well-known sounds in video games is that victory sound when you defeat somebody in a Final Fantasy game. It's like da 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 da. Like everyone recognizes that music if they played any Final Fantasy games. And also the Final Fantasy II for Nintendo game had the score that was really beautiful. In 1989, Uematsu composes the music for Final Fantasy Legends on the Game Boy. One year later, he continues his work writing the music for both Final Fantasy III and Final Fantasy Legends II. In 1991, Uematsu's talent is given a little more room to soar when the Final Fantasy games move up to the 16-bit Super Famicom, which would later be released in the U.S. as the Super Nintendo. With his NES and SNES music, it was just brilliant considering what limited tools he was working with. He was able to get players to, to really feel an, a story with the music itself, and a lot of people think that that's his best stuff. Even though he has more powerful tools to work with, they, they really think he just brought something really special back then. Uematsu composes music for the next three Final Fantasy games. And also lends a hand by writing some pieces for the hit RPG, Chrono Trigger. Final Fantasy VI was a graphical powerhouse. It was the most beautiful game you'd ever seen. It had a fantastic musical score. The music is widely considered to be Nobuo Uematsu's best score. It has close to 100 tracks. Each of the 14 playable characters has their own theme. There's a large variety of music for the different locations, for the enemies and bosses. 
It's just chock full of music, and it's some of the best work he's ever done. But even with the new advancements and game hardware, Uematsu is still limited by technology. I think compared to what we can do now, limitations were huge. The amount of notes you can use were so small that you couldn't really do anything outside of what was provided in front of you. So even if I wanted to challenge myself, I think the limitations were right in front of my eyes. I didn't really have that much room to work with. However, a new system is just around the corner, and it will open up nearly limitless musical possibilities for Nobuo Uematsu. By the time Sony releases the PlayStation in 1994, there are 14 CD soundtracks featuring Uematsu's music in retail stores across Japan. The Final Fantasy games are now an established franchise, and Uematsu is one of the most respected composers in gaming. In 1997, Final Fantasy VII is released for the PlayStation and sells over 9.2 million copies in its lifetime. Nobu just blows me away. I'll listen to like Final Fantasy VII, I'll be listening to this music and this great orchestral scores and, and choirs and everything, and after Final Fantasy VII I'm like, that stuff's amazing! There are actually a bunch of songs that I like in Final Fantasy VII. But Eris' theme is one of my favorites. Opening I also like the opening sequence where Eris walks out and a motorcycle goes by. And then you see the smokestacks. And then the logo pops up. And then, going from that transition into the actual game, that part is something that I'm very proud of as a team. Not just the music element of it, but how it matches up with the whole opening sequence. And thanks to the PlayStation CD format, the possibilities for Uematsu are nearly limitless. That was a huge leap. I did feel as if I could do pretty much anything that I felt like doing. And it gave me a lot of freedom to implement different ideas. The influences from some of Uematsu's favorite musicians begin to show more clearly than ever. I don't know if I would call it an inspiration, but there was a thought that I had in creating this piece. This specific piece was Jimi Hendrix. Take Jimi Hendrix and mix that with Stravinsky, the Russian composer. And it might sound very extreme, but I wanted to know what it would sound like to mix those two. At the same time, I felt as if there was a common element, and the result is what you have in the end of Final Fantasy VII. And his soundtracks go from being movie-like to becoming something much bigger. First of all, the big difference is in the playtime. A movie is two hours, but a role-playing game like Final Fantasy is at least 40 hours of material. So the number of pieces of music needed is really enormous. It's always daunting. He completely breaks the mold. He's not doing, like, the ice level music. Here's a guy that just pours emotion into his music. Also, I have to predict what the player will be feeling. Unlike a movie where the audience has the story played out in front of them, in the case of games, the player decides, I think I'll go to this town, or no, maybe not. And when the soundtrack to Final Fantasy VII is released on CD, the results are stunning. The Final Fantasy VII soundtrack, there is no video game soundtrack in the world that has sold more copies than the Final Fantasy VII soundtrack. He's right up there with Madonna and Britney Spears over in Japan. When this guy comes out with the soundtrack, people are listening. Just when gamers think it can't get any better, in 1999, Uematsu creates another incredible soundtrack for Final Fantasy VIII. And then Final Fantasy VIII comes out, and I'm like, oh my god, the opening cinematic, and I'm like, I got goosebumps going on. Having a huge chorus had always been something that inspired me. It just amazes me. It is a big difference than just using instruments. Final Fantasy VIII is probably my personal favorite. And for the first time, Uematsu teams up with Asian pop icon Fei Wong for the song Eyes on Me. The single wins Song of the Year at the 14th Annual Japan Gold Disc Awards in 1999. 
It is the first time music from a video game wins this award. Once in a while, I will go to a CD store and I'll hear Eyes on Me playing in the background. I start thinking, oh, that's such a familiar tune. I remember listening to that song a long time ago. And then it will dawn on me, oh yeah, I wrote that music. The fact that Eyes on Me gets played all over the place is one piece that I'm happy about. In 2000, Final Fantasy IX is released. Uematsu composes 160 pieces of music for the new sequel. Nobuo also expands beyond games. He writes the theme song for the anime series Ah, My Goddess, and even contributes to albums by Japanese pop stars. But has the talented composer reached the peak of his fame? The year is 2001, and Final Fantasy X is out for the PlayStation 2. In less than three months, more than one million copies of Final Fantasy X are sold. And once again, the new hardware enables Uematsu to expand his art even further. For a change of pace, he writes a heavy metal piece that surprises some gamers. When I first saw Final Fantasy X, I was blown away. I'm like, it's a rock video. Death metal. That's cool. That was so different from typical Final Fantasy titles because normally we have a very orchestral kind of background music. But it's so much fun with this hard rocking, you know, soundtrack. I just wanted to create something that is obviously different to match up with the sequence. On May 28th of the same year, Nobuo Uematsu makes it into Time Magazine's feature, Time 100, The Next Wave Innovators. A year later, Nobuo's latest work appears in Final Fantasy XI. And in 2004, Uematsu's music is finally heard live in the U.S. at the Dear Friends concert held at the Walt Disney Concert Hall. We've already done similar performances and had concerts in Japan. But this is going to be our first outside of Japan. And I guess the main thing that I want to see is the reaction of the audience in the States. I've never seen that, so that's going to be something I really want to take home with me. And hopefully this is going to serve as a kickoff to other shows. The show sells out in one day. When I heard the good news, I was in Tokyo, and I was in disbelief. I couldn't believe it. I was very surprised and very shocked. At the same time, I was very happy. I was curious to see why it sold out so quickly. Today, Nobuo's work is legendary, and the Final Fantasy franchise has sold more than 49 million games around the world. Something that's always been present with the Final Fantasy series is that it has a very well-rounded musical score. The music is so great in Final Fantasy that uh, immediately when you turn on a Final Fantasy game, you hear the soundtrack rolling into your speakers and you know you're in for a big, big adventure. But the composer from Kochi remains humble. To me, creating the music for the Final Fantasy series is something I just do, not just as a living, but because I just like to create music. And he hopes that his music will help bridge the gap between game music and film music. I think it's going to arrive there. The games are played by kids, but when the kids grow up, games will be played by parents, too. When we get to that point, games will be lined up on the same shelves as TV and the movies. And the difference between game music and other music will probably disappear. And until that day, Uematsu will continue to raise the bar for music and gaming. There are people who work best under pressure, and those who can push aside the pressure and create something nice. I probably fall under both of those categories. Lately, I think it's the relaxed, unstrained music, as opposed to the forced music, that comes naturally. I think that's what makes it brilliant. Not that I'm totally brilliant, just that I want to become so. There's about 500 people in the world who do what we do, music composition. And I would have to say that Nobu Matsu's music is the best of the best. And
and his music being known all over the world, he is number one. Absolutely. Join G4 Tech TV as we look at the games taking this year's trip to g the award show for gamers. This week, meet the nominees for best sports game, soundtrack, and more. Join in the journey starting tomorrow at 8 p.m. The Road to g Volume 3, presented by EB Games and Jeep.